We good? Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, a couple quick things. Uh, I don't like to ask for money, but I'm asking for money. We're trying to buy the church and uh, looking for as much donations as we possibly can get to help us out here. Uh, just go on our uh, on our website you know, on the front here. Go to that website and that'll tell you how to get send money to us. Send it to uh, 92 Pine Street. We've got a 501c3 number that we can give you out. It's tax deductible. Uh, please help us out. Uh, i got a new thing here. The Knights of Columbus have opened something every Friday, 10 a.m. to noon, for veterans to go down there, have coffee, fellowship, and get anything that you, any of your needs met. They're going to help you out with the VA and get uh, anything they can possibly get done for you. So if, you, if you're in the Laconia area, go down uh, the Knights of Columbus, 10 a.m. to noontime on Fridays. Okay. Here we go. Heavenly Father, I just ask you to uh, lift today up, Lord, that, uh, boy, I, I, I hope the Holy Spirit just touches everybody's heart the way this message has touched me today, Lord, that we get an understanding that we just didn't get, Lord, and it just all comes clear and very vivid to the point in our minds. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So as we know, uh, the Bible says that Satan's going to have us put a mark on us. And it won't be us, because we won't be here. That's the great part. So this is, if this is happening to you, you better look around, because uh, the rapture happened and you're in trouble. <laughs> um, so he, he, we know that that had to happen. I'm going to do the scripture on that to verify it. And then there's, uh, there's more in there that has to happen. Things have to happen, right? So what is the mechanism, right? Today's sermon is called mechanism, right? What's the mechanism? It's, you know, how does this happen? How does it happen? So in uh, Revelations chapter 13, verses 16 and 17, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except the one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. That's going to be on you. So we always agreed as Christians that that's what's going to happen, but how is that going to happen? So I believe, and you can, I have no verification of this whatsoever, other than I believe that this COVID virus was all set up so that he could do a trial run. He pretty much stopped the entire world. You could not travel unless you're vaccinated. You couldn't go into a store unless you were vaccinated. Now, that is not the mark of the beast, but it's a pre-run to see if he could get the whole world to jump on board, and he just did, right? Now, let's step it up a little bit farther. Not only did he do that, when I got my first tattoo, actually I got two at starters, right? Why get one, get two, right? So when I first got there, you didn't do anything below your wrist. Some guys had a rule that it didn't go below your elbow. Certainly nothing above your collar. That was rule. That way you could keep jobs, you're not causing any issues with people. That was rule. So if that was rule, how is Satan going to change that? Well, over the years, it drifted down into the hand. Not that there weren't people getting them on their hands or any other place, but it was a rarity, right? Now it's all over the hands, right? Where else? The eyebrows, the face markings, the whole head tattoo, right? That's a precursor. Sure, I'll write that on the side of my head. 
Put it on my wrist. Put it right up front. I want the world to see. Right? It's already set up. <laughs> that wasn't set up a hundred years ago. <laughs> now it is. We are so close to the ending times that this, if, if nothing else, this book should become more and more real to you every day. <clears throat> every single day. I've got to find the verse that I want. Which one was it? <laughs> okay. So, Matthew chapter 10, verse 21. Now, brother will deliver a brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Right? Well, that's similar to what Satan said he was going to do by putting the mark. The children will be going against their parents. Parents will be going against their children in a, in a, in a fashion that is just unthinkable. Unthinkable a hundred years ago. That could not, that just, it ain't going to happen. There were pockets of such evil, but it wasn't rampant. Look at today's world. Today's world, parents finally feel safe when their kids are locked up in prison. Because <laughs> they're not running the streets. Kids who get stuck in a certain lifestyle have a tendency to steal everything their parents have. Not because that's what they want to do, but, but that's because that's who they end up becoming. Right? Pay attention to this. That isn't because that's who they are. That's who they have to become. And Satan has set this up perfectly, right? We're getting the marks on us. We're writing all over our bodies. We're writing in spots that Satan needs us to have. We're fighting with our parents. Our parents are disowning the kids. It's such a bad there's so many grandparents raising their grandchildren with love that they no longer give their own children. <laughs> and those children hate their parents for taking care of their kids. That's now. That's right now. That's not going to happen. That's happening right now. What's the mechanism? How does Satan get that thrown in there? I'll tell you, maybe this should be the name of it. One word, lies. Lies. It ain't the drugs. It ain't the drinking. It's the lies that come through. As I stand there, staggering away, saying I ain't drunk, <laughs> I'm convinced I can make you believe that <clears throat> I'm not drunk. As I come out of an overdose, and I come to, and I'm like, what are you people talking about? I didn't do anything. I just nodded off for a second. I don't even know the pain that happened, the CPR, the not canning, the crying, the withdrawals, the hatred that you have that these drugs have taken over our children, and then you're mad that I made you sit here in front of me when you didn't even get high. That's right now. That's today. The past hundred years, it has, it has, it's on steroids. Lying is on steroids. It's beyond any scope we've ever seen in our lives. How? Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. Now the works of the flesh are evidence, which are, Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdliness, idolatry, and here it is, right here. This is it. This is the kicker. Sorcery. Hatred. Contentiousness. Jealousness. Outbursts of wrath. Self-ambitions. Self-ambitions. This all ties into this one word. Sorcery. Sorcery broken down from the Hebrew 
to the Greek as pharmakia, broken down to the English as pharmaceutical. Don't mess around with pharmaceuticals. Why? Because Satan's going to drive it. And what's going to come in that? Lies. Straight lies. You can't get the truth from someone for nothing. Lies. To the point where none of us believe anybody. Nobody believes what a pastor has to say anymore. They certainly don't want to follow it because they can't sink their heart into it because they've been lied to by so many. Most of them think they're going to hell and they'll never get back. I know when I came to church, I was going to hell. There was no way to go to heaven. Not for my actions. That was a lie. Absolute lie. Nobody has to go to hell. But you're stuck in the lies. All driven by Satan. Don't believe me. It's in this book. Revelations chapter 9, verse 21. And they do not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immoralities, or their thefts, sorceries. They don't, they don't repent from their drug abuse. We get clean. We still can't stop lying. <laughs> it becomes such a natural nature of us, the part of addiction that gets busted in there is lies. I learned to confess my sins. I learned to get everything out of the way so there's no more lie, no more deceitfulness in my heart that Satan wants me to keep so I'll go get high and cause more trouble. That's what this is saying. I keep, I, from the sorceries, from using drugs, I become a murderer. Sexual immorality. Waking up places I don't even know who I'm with. <laughs> I steal everything. They're thieves. I steal everything. I mostly steal my own trust because I don't even believe what I'm doing anymore. I have people tell me things that I did the night before and I'm like, this. I don't do those things. Yeah, I did. There's people in prison for murder, and they don't believe they did it because they were in such a blackout from the garbage that they were using that that's where they ended up and they don't even know they did it. I know, I have friends that have been there for that. It all comes from lies. But what's the big thing? Why is lies such a problem? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what this book says. John chapter 8. Verse 44, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. <laughs> I want to get high. That's what I want to do. I want to get high, and then I want to lie about being high. Because that's what he does. He says, Not a, I'm going to show you a whole new way to get sober. Take these drugs. <laughs> and then we get content on those drugs till we add drugs on top of those, and then they add drugs on top of those. And then you're doing so many drugs, you don't even know your name anymore. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. He doesn't stand with Christ, he can't. Because there is no truth in them. That's me. I'm like that. Why? Because that was my father. I become so much like that, I can't stop lying. Even though I got sober, I had to work my way through forgiveness of things that were done to me and what I did to people. <coughs> when he speaks a lie, 
He speaks from his own resources. That's all he knows how to do. For he is a liar and the father of it. He's the father of lies. So when I'm stuck in addiction due to sorcery, because I'm not supposed to be playing with that stuff, and I'm not saying if you have a medication, if I had a heart medication, I'd take it. So if I have a psych medication, I'd take it. You just need to be sure that they're giving you the right diagnose. Because they diagnosed me wrong my entire life. My life was stolen that way. But part of it I gave away because I was willing to listen to them and I didn't want to go listen to this. I didn't want to hear the truth. I didn't want to be a Jesus follower. I didn't want this stuff in my life. Because that was stuff that you can't fight over. You can't protect yourself with. You're just going to be a sissy in the corner just listening to Jesus. Well, let me tell you, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> and it's because I'm a sissy for Jesus now. That's the way people want to look at it. That's kind of the way I looked at it. You know, if you look back when 1900 started, from that point on, how much sorcery got involved. TV, they prayed at the end of TV when it went off the air. Radio stations went off the air. Everything went off the air. You went home, you went to bed. Sunday, no alcohol was allowed to be sold. You know how alcohol came back into being allowed to be sold on Sundays? Through drug stores. <laughs> the drug stores were open. They were selling drugs. So they said, well, while we're open, we might as well be able to sell alcohol. And it broke the blue laws, the laws that said no alcohol was going to be done on Sundays. Through pharmacia. <laughs> Look it up. Don't believe me. I'm a liar. <laughs> I'm saved by Christ. I'm telling you the truth. Look. Don't believe me. Look. Look at this. Follow this. Follow the scripture. Right? They say, they say, follow, follow the doctors, right? Follow that. Follow the science. I missed the word. Follow the science, right? They want you to follow the science so you follow it and take COVID because they say this is what the science is. But when you say, okay, the science is that that baby's alive in there, they say, well, that's not good. That's not true. That doesn't matter. That science doesn't matter. Well, I'd rather follow the scripture and see where that takes me. Try that. Go down and tell them. Follow the scripture. Oh, no, no. That's your religious belief. That's not. Well, it's true. The science says that that baby's alive in there. <laughs> Pharmakia. Destruction of the world. Satan is in every home. Pharmakia is smoking a cigarette. Golf is your mind. You, know, you, you take a drag off a cigarette, you get a little bit dizzy. You know why? Because you just shut the oxygen off going to your brain. <laughs> Do you know that your mind creates this imagery in your body that when you need a deep, strong breath of air, it tells you to have a cigarette? Why does a guy who's working out who smokes got to all of a sudden go have a cigarette because his mind has been convinced that he takes such a hard drag on that cigarette that it opens his lungs. So his mind is saying, I need the lungs open. Go get a cigarette that will make him open the lungs. But the problem with that is it's a lie, even though the mind is telling the body to do that because now you're taking in polluted air that has no oxygen in it and you're sending it up and you pass out. <laughs> And then that was such a bad day, I need a drink. <laughs> lies. Straight up lies. Destroying families. We come to where we don't want our children around. Our parents are so high, I don't want to go home anymore. They're so whacked out on drugs, they're trying to have sex with anybody that comes by. They don't even know half the time. Or they do know and they have to say so high that they can't live with it. 
Then they label you something because you have all this wacko stuff done to you. And you believe it. And all it is is lies. My whole life was fed lies. And then when I started telling the truth, I was no good. <laughs> so I'm going to stay in the lies. I'm a good person. I don't want them lies no more. Here's the truth. Satan is running this planet like you've never seen before. He's got a couple of minutes left, and he's trying to take as many of us with him as he possibly can. And those of us who are willing here to stand here on the truth, we want to take you with us. And all you got to do is believe. Believe that that's true. And if you really open your eyes and your heart to these statements here today, you're going to see that this, uh, this world is in total wreckage. It's all set to be ready to be flushed down the toilet, man. You can live an awesome life in this mess if you rest in Christ and let him take care of everything that's going on in your life. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Or he doesn't. He lives in me. He tells me you should not go do that. You know, I was in work the other day. This is, this is how... This is what you become, self-ambitious. We read that in Galatians, right? Self-ambitious. We're so driven for ourselves when we're stuck in that addiction area that it's all about us and we are right. Self-righteousness is just rampant in us, right? So I was in work and I got I, I wear a watch for taking pulses, right? Because rather than looking up that clock, it's easier for me to look at my watch. And I look at my watch and... The clock up there is 20 minutes faster than my watch. I said, hey, that clock's wrong. Everybody said, that clock's right. I said, no, no, I got my watch on. That clock's wrong. I was ready to fight people. My watch was wrong. I wasn't willing to face up that my watch could be wrong. Right? My self, as stupid as that little example was, God hit me in the face with that. How often do I feel like I am correct and everything else is wrong. I had to, I looked at that, someone else was telling me, their watch said it was different than mine. I had to take my phone out. Now my phone's gonna tell me the right time, right? Because I'm gonna believe my phone, right? And it did. My watch was wrong. Somehow it got 20 minutes fast. Don't know how that happened. Doesn't matter. I was willing to argue with people that my watch was right. Man. The wreckage. That's not what I grew up in. That's not what my belief was in the, in the midst of the misery that I was in. It's so speeded up right now. We look and we say, how is this world coming apart like this? How come? Two people can't have a conversation that are in disagreement with each other without a fight. I'm not talking to that person no more. You can't. They want to kill you. Because it's lies. Matthew, chapter 24, verses 6 through 8. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. Right? Everybody's freaking out, man. COVID is coming. Ukraine's falling apart. Russia's going to go do this. Man, our hearts are troubled. Why? Because we won't rest in Christ. He knows every inch of what's going on right now. There is nothing he has missed. Or did, he, did God get up this morning and say, oh, you know, made a mistake. My watch is wrong. <laughs> no, he's right on schedule. He's told us he's right on schedule. Don't be troubled. For all these things must come to pass. They have to happen. This has to happen. Why? Because it verifies this. When's it going to happen? Right now. It's happening. The tattooing, the traveling, the needing to have this to get to there. Now, right now, there are jobs in this country, if you are not vaccinated, you can't have. 
Call me a liar. I don't think so. You can't have the job, no matter how qualified, even if you are working there, right up to the point where they said, follow the science. They said, follow the science. We're going by the CDC rules. If you are not vaccinated, you cannot work here. The same building says that that baby's not alive in there. Same building. But they're following the science. I don't know. All the correctors can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure they will. Those babies aren't alive in there. They're not functioning. There's no brain. Everything's just kind of floating around on its own, doing its own thing. But the end is not yet. It's not yet. We're awful close. For nation will rise against nation. We're in such a time of peace, this couldn't possibly be true. Kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. You can't even get baby food. <laughs> Have you gone down to vegetable stores lately? There ain't a whole bunch of stuff. Pestilence. Earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of the sorrows. Those are the beginnings. We're in the midst of it. We, have, we haven't seen nothing yet. All's they're waiting for. What's the big thing that Satan needs right now? He needs us gone. Because it all doesn't completely come apart until after the Christians have been moved off the planet. Then it, we, we won't see it. You can't fathom what this is going to come like. <laughs> That's what puts all this in perspective. They'll be standing in line to get the mark of the beast. They'll be turning there. You'll have to turn. You know, there's a there's a sign up on uh, on Route 16. If you know someone that's trying to steal Medicaid, you can turn them in anonymously. <laughs> there's gonna be signs like that all over the place. If you know your parents aren't vaccinated or don't have the, you can turn them in. If you know your kids are doing something, there was a guy the other day. He spotted someone on TV that was being chased and. Uh, uh, he was being chased because he molested a woman or attempted to kidnap her or something. I don't know. It was on the news the other day. Again, you can look it up. And uh, his father turned him in. He said, hey, that's my kid. I know those sneakers. He says, that's the way he dressed, and I know those sneakers. He turned the kid in. Not to say I wouldn't. It's something like that. I don't think I'd do it publicly on the TV. Wouldn't want my child running around and doing the things that they do and, and that type of nature. But I don't know. I don't know what crime I probably committed today. At least in my mind, wanted to swear at a couple people. Turn me in. I wear this is my new shirt, right? Jesus loves me and my tattoos. Turn me in. I bet you there's a lot of Christians who won't like that I'm wearing that shirt today. Have a good day. I'm going to stand here. I'm going to possess, profess Jesus Christ is my Savior. That's what's going to get me going to heaven. And I will follow him as I followed everything else in the world that this is asking me. I would love to turn people in, beat them up, drag them around. That would be awesome. Beautiful. I've had that done to me. <laughs> What a blessing. I can laugh. I can laugh. Wow. All right. I don't have time to tell that one. <laughs> the things that have been done to me and the things that I've done to people are biblically in line, man. But now it's just so prevalent. You can you can deny this. You can deny this. You can walk away. You say, this guy's lost his mind. I'm not going there anymore. I'm not listening to him anymore. This is the truth. Follow the scripture. I just gave you the verses. Read them all week long. See if the Holy Spirit inspires you in belief 
of how true this is. Keep reading this. Don't just come here today and listen to this and say, okay, Pastor Chris said this. No. Go read it and have the Holy Spirit convict you of what he's telling us is coming. Not me. You and God. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Then you can stand on it. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we just, we're so gracious for your grace, Lord. Grace upon grace you have given us to come out of what is going on in the world. We don't have to follow it. We don't have to be troubled of what's going on because we know you're in charge of it. Satan might be running it, but you're just letting him play until this all folds out. It separates those who need to be separated. Well, I'm glad I'm separated towards you, Lord. I want to chase you, love you the way you love me. You loved me before I wanted to love you, Lord. Thank you. You're everything I wanted to have in a father. You're everything that I wanted to have in a direction, someone to follow, someone to pursue, a life to pursue, is the peace through you, Jesus. Thank you so much. If there's anybody here that would like to receive you, would like to be part of that, just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. Forgive me. Come into my heart and live. I want to know you. Amen. Heavenly Father, you know who said that right now. Touch their hearts with a peace, a peace and a comfort that they don't have to worry about anything that's happening in this world today, that you are totally in control of what's going on. We might not like it, we might not agree with it, but man, we know you're in charge. All in Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. <clears throat>